Hi there. Welcome back. So today I'm going to play with some new paints that I got. They're not, they're not new. They're Amsterdam paints, but they're new to me. So I've never used these paints before and I see a lot of other artists using them and I wanted to see what kind of consistency they were, uh, the price point, and also how well they do on the jelly plate. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to experiment with Amsterdam paint. Let's get started. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, so these are some of the paints from my uh, set, my small set of Amsterdam paints. They are a little thicker than the fluid acrylics that I normally use from Golden. Um, I want to see just how well they do on a jelly plate. So these are the colors that I selected from the, the small set that I, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use this one, but this one is blue violet, um, but definitely black and white, primary cyan, pyroli red, vermilion, and some azo yellow medium, which I think I'm going to like this and this together. They're going to be beautiful. We shall see. Anyway, right now, this is just a test to see how well they, they do on the plate along with my, my stencils. So let's start with a, um, let's start with this combination. Why not? Let's see what kind of consistency. See, it's, it's not very, it's not super thick. It's not a heavy body. It's not like, it's probably a soft body. And today I'm just going to use copy paper. And I have my, now let me, let me move this over a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we're going to have some stencils and our uh, copy paper. Let's, so, so far I'm liking how I'm getting a nice thin coat. Clean this off a little bit. I've got too much vermilion going on on this yellow side. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so let's start by just picking this up with a stencil. These are two stencils because the these are, I, I think they're eight inch stencils and they're just a little too small for this plate. But I have combined stencils before and I usually like that better than using one stencil on the whole plate. It's a little more interesting. Okay. All right. So I like the way it picks up. Let's just get, let's do the ghost print. I am going to put another color on top of this to do the ghost print. So let's do, you know what? There's a really dark red here. I think this is a, it's a burnt umber. No, that's not good. All right, we're gonna just try this red. So the red was not contrasting with the other colors. So I'm starting over with that. 
I kind of like the way this looks, so I am going to put some yellow down to pick this up. I think I'm going to have to learn a little bit more about how much paint because this is different. So maybe I'm putting down too much paint. And then maybe this paint need, requires me to stay longer on the plate than the fluid acrylic. I don't know. These are all questions we have to ask ourselves when we're trying a new, a new paint. We can't always use our same techniques. And so when also you're watching me do something with the fluid acrylic you and you're using a different kind of paint you have to keep that in mind when you're working so this is going to make a nice collage paper maybe as a background starter okay i'm just going to keep going even with this let's let's switch to purple and mix it with a little bit of white this is a violet let's just mix it with a tiny little bit So I'm going to try to just do something a little abstract here, not covering the entire plate, but trying to lift off the paint that is there. I'm going to leave it slightly longer this time. very cool and I'm noticing like all this little bubbling that's happening I guess it means I have too much paint on the plate and I didn't put that much at least I didn't think I did all right let's very interesting okay this almost looks like rust I love it. All right, let's try something different this time. Let's put a little black down on the plate. It's a nice creamy paint, I will say that. It's very creamy. So this time I'm trying to do a thinner application. I really want to learn how much paint I need to put down on this plate for this paint. Okay. And I'm going to use this stencil. Along with this one. I'm going to pick up through the stencil and leave a ghost print because it's the ghost print that I really want. That's kind of nice too, like to pull a piece out for, for a collage, that would be very nice. 
Okay, let's... I might let this dry just a little bit, just to make sure, because I'm used to the fluid acrylics, like I said, and they dry really fast. This is a slightly thicker paint. I think I'm gonna just let it dry a little bit. If it's coming off on your finger like that, then it's not good. So I'm gonna let it dry. Okay, so I just waited two minutes. I did find some green, during, and I found a um, primary yellow, which is a lighter yellow than I was. This one says medi uh, azo yellow medium, which is a warmer, you know, very warm yellow. Um, this is that sort of lemony yellow that I like. And here's a green. So I'm going to try to blend them a little bit in the middle. I'm going to have green on one side, blend a little bit on the other, and then have yellow on this other side. And I'm trying to just squeeze out a little. Put some in here to blend. Let's see if this works. Maybe I'll use my smaller brighter. And I'm gonna do very light application because I definitely think my earlier ones were too heavy. These are very transparent looking. And now we're gonna have green. It's prob this is probably gonna be a little more opaque. Okay, let's see what that does. You know, it's sometimes scary to try new paint. Wow. <laughs> it's like, it reacts so differently. But once you get, you know, Sometimes it just takes a couple of sessions before you get used to it. Still cool, very cool. But less wrinkly, so I think the lighter application is definitely the way to go with this paint. Okay, let us, let's try. Okay, I think Wow, that green is beautiful. That is a very pretty color. Gorgeous. I don't know if you can see how pretty that color is. In the tube, this did not excite me. But wow, look at that pretty color. I almost didn't want to use it. Okay, so let's do another one with that color because I liked it. And I, I'm a big fan of black. Just love my black. So I'm going to do black again. And this time I'm going to be careful not to put too much. Nice thin coat, obviously, that works. All right, let's try something a little different. This also makes a really nice ghost print. And we could have some other lines, straight lines going across the bottom. I'm going to overlap the stencils a little bit. Oh, I didn't get it too straight, but it's okay. This is collage paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are going to, these are not finished compositions. So leave me a comment below if you like to do finished compositions on your jelly plate or if you are just making collage paper. What what do you prefer? And also, what kind of paper do you prefer to use? 
I, when I'm working in collage, I prefer the copy paper. It's just easier to work with. And I'm frequently using black gesso. So my rice paper, if I use rice paper, I can sometimes see the black gesso through the bottom. And again, we're gonna have to wait for this to dry. All right, I'm gonna do like a red, white, and blue. Mix my, oops, that looks a tiny little bit of white in there on both sides. Okay, let's see if that's enough paint. I don't know. some of these blotchy white spots because I always I'm always happy with those. Let's see the red. So I could tell just by the way the paper looks on the surface of the gel plate that I'm starting to get the hang of it. Um, this is a lot smoother. We don't have all those like little wet wrinkles like I had on previous ones. So I think I'm finally getting it. So I'm noticing that the light, the colors look lighter. I, of course, I did mix it with a little bit of white, but that wasn't very, that wasn't a lot of white. Um, I do find that these paints blend easier on the plate. So if that's what you're looking for, um, then this is a good thing, you know. Um, I'm not getting a clear ghost print. I really had a hard time picking up the paint in between in the stencil with this paint but I still, I still like it. All right, so let's start with a different color. Oh, and the other thing that I'm noticing is most of the paint is picking up. I'm not getting a lot of uh, scabs on the plate. Okay, let's start with a dark color again. This time we're gonna do the violet. This is called Permanent, permanent Blue Violet. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble seeing it. My big brayer. Wow, this is a pretty color. Again, you can't look at the tube and know what, what you're going to get. It looks much darker through the plastic of the tube. Interesting. Okay, so let's go pick another stencil. I'm going to go back to this one because I think this color, this, this is a very delicate, pretty stencil. And I think it's going to look gorgeous with this, with this purpley violet color. If I had some rice paper, maybe I'd be able to pick this up better. Maybe it'll be good for this particular application. 
Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so let's wait for it to dry. Okay, so I'm going to pick this up with yellow. I'm getting the hang of it as in terms of how much paint to put on the plate. So as you noticed, I did not put a whole lot and I was able to spread it across the entire plate and I got that nice thin coat and I didn't waste any paint. Okay, so our yellow and purple made brown, right? So that's a good example of how not, not to make your colors. So um, because the uh, ghost print was very transparent, and then we put the yellow on top, they mix together and they make brown. It is still gorgeous, I love it. Um, but we did not keep our nice vibrant purple. So anyway, this is, I see a, a tinge of purple in here, but that's about it. It pretty much went brown. So I'm going to try mixing this blue and this blue. I'm going to start pulling out some of my other stencils. So these I like a lot. It's a very pretty color. It's more like a periwinkle. The combination of those two colors. All right, I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then I'm definitely picking this up with this iridescent. I know I said that this was a Amsterdam paint demo, but I, I wanna get like a pearlized thing going on here. So I'm gonna mix this yellow, this, um, primary yellow with the pearl to get like a really nice iridescent thing going on. Be right back. Okay, so I'm going to start with the pearl and I'm just going to add some yellow. And now we really got our green. And unfortunately, we left some paint on the plate. That was the first time that happened. And if I don't know if you could see that, I'll hold it up to the light, but it has a little bit of sheen from the iridescent pearl. And I'm not unhappy with scabs like this because um, they add to the, to the interest but um, there's also some like beautiful areas in here that I would like to use in collage. So some of these other papers that we used as pickup sheets, I wanna lay another color on top and maybe with a 
big mask or something. So I'm going to do some, we're going to switch to masking over these stenciled sheets. And I'm not sure what color yet. We might do more than one layer. So on this one, I'm just going to do yellow. I'm not even going to lay down a mask or a stencil or anything. I'm just going to add a light coat on top of this. Do something like that with one of these. So let's try the vermilion. Very nice. Okay, now for the purple. I'm going to do a, a light application of blue on top of that. The last thing I want is more brown. So now we're going to find some masks and I'll uh, do a third layer on top of that. Okay, so I have two sets of masks. This first one. These are masks that I made on my Cricut. Let's go this way. They have been overused. So let's see which one of these. Let's, let's do that one with this. And let us let us do vermilion on top of that. Let's just see. Let's just try something different. So this is going to create some negative space that this dotted design is going to show through. <laughs> absolutely in love with this so don't throw away your cleanup sheets this um, these were pickup sheets excuse me um, they can sometimes make some very interesting I wasn't even sure if these colors were going to work together um, I'm not used to these particular shades of colors because I'm used to working with the golden shades I use and I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone with the color palette but here I am. I'm right back where I started. <laughs> this is my color palette. Okay, so let's try something else with this. 
and I'm not really sure. So let's mix. Uh, I'm going to have a little, maybe white, maybe white. And I'm going to do this mask instead. Okay, let's try three shades of blue. Why not? Let's try this blue that didn't work out the last time. But let's see. Maybe I should mix it with a little bit of the violet, like I said. And maybe I will get something a little closer to what I want. So it's a little splotchy. I guess it's hard to mix when you've got a mask on your plate. So I definitely want to play with the Amsterdam paints a little bit more. I will continue to use this small set and then maybe buy larger ones next time. Oh my. Okay, that worked. That's how I visualized it. Okay, now the last one, I'm going to try to add something to this in black. So we're going to try to add some of the purple, and I might mix it with a little bit of black just to make it a little bit darker. And then, um, or, or maybe even the blue. I don't know. So let's... Let's try to mix it with this blue. Oop, I put too much. All right. I'm trying to get it to be nice and dark. And I'm just going to lay down my circles on this red. Do you like red and purple combination? I do. I used to have an apartment in New York City with red walls and purple floors. <laughs> I had purple carpet. I'd seen some I saw that color combination and I just decided I need to liven up my life and live with some of that color. I like that. Okay, we might as well pick this up too. I'm just going to pick it up with some of that pearl again because I really love it. I had a little bit of green on my briar, but I like it. Oh my God, look at the sheen on that. Okay, let's, uh, let's clean up. So one of the things I notice whenever I use any of the pearl or any other 
iridescent type paint, it sticks to the plate more and then it's really hard to pick up. So I'm using some packing tape to really get up the, uh, the residue that's left here for my next pull that I don't want to have that on there. It's not quite everything, but good enough. All right, so now we're going to do white. And we're going to lay down some masks. Let me find my others. So this is going to be sort of a transparent white that's going to lay over our red and purple, which isn't really purple anymore, but mixed with the red and it's a uh, very dark purple, put it that way. We're just going to Lift these up. Look at this. This is our purple over the red. With red over the purple. I can't even remember anymore. I wish I was registered more on the page, but um, I usually don't pay attention to those things because I'm cutting these up. But um, if I was trying to make this the, like a composition, I would definitely register it. Maybe we'll do a video in the future on how to register your paper over your jelly plate so that way you each layer will be over in exactly the same spot instead of I severely missed, severely missed it here. But I like that. That red is very pretty. And I hardly used it at all this session. Next time. Okay, so let's let's review what this was like an early, early on where I was just seeing and I think I had too much paint on the plate. So I didn't get a good result. This one I also I this is not exactly what I would call a success, except that I do like this rusty looking uh, grungy areas for, for some future collage. I'm sure it'll show up somewhere. This is one of my grunge sheets that I tried to salvage. I don't know. You tell me if you think it was a salvage. I like this one better. And this one has a little bit of sheen. Now this was our uh, yellow over the purple. Now they are complementary colors, right? So what do you get? You get brown. This one I love. I just, that green was a really nice surprise. And I like how it all blended. The ghost prints seem to be a little heavier with the Amsterdam paints. I am definitely next time I use the Amsterdam I'm going to have some tissue paper try to really get inside these little openings get all that paint out. Same thing here but I love the way it blended and of course these are some of our that was the 
where I added multiple layers on top of our pull-up sheets where we were making ghost prints. This one, not as nice as that one. I think maybe my red was a little too light. And then this was just me picking up the ghost and I love that sheen. I will do a video just on um, these iridescent paints. I love that one. And this one, these, these ones with the mask and the negative, I love. So, and then I was, I was just cleaning up my plate and I got this great background. So I'm going to save this one because I can use it the next time. Okay. So thank you for stopping by. I hope you really enjoyed uh, my little experiment with Amsterdam paints. I do think that they are fantastic on the jelly plate. They're nice and creamy and you will enjoy them too. So thanks again. And don't forget, create, inspire, and share. See you next time. Bye-bye.